Yesterday, I uploaded a video replacing a melted connector on the Gigabyte 4090. As a matter of fact, the past week, I uploaded, I think, three videos replacing melted connectors on 40 series graphics card. What's going on? I said in yesterday's video, is this a user's fault or the factory, the maker of the card? Viewers are split. A lot of viewers are saying it's a user error where the user is not plugging in the cable all the way. You have a connector on top here, one connector, and if the cable is not plugged in all the way, or it has been proven or shown, if the cable is not plugged in all the way, that connector will melt. And others are blaming this on the maker of the card. Some viewers suggested that if you are buying a 40 series card, to buy the cable mod 90 degree adapter, that will save the connector from melting. Today we have another video card that came in for a melted connector. And we have the cable mod 90 degree adapter connected to the power connector here. And this card was mailed over for a melted connector. Now, I do not see any burn mark or anything melting on the cable mod 90 degree adapter. If you look here, the connector looks super clean. And I do not know how the user figured out that he has a melted connector. But one thing I can tell you is I smell burn. I smell burn from about one and a half foot away. The card's right here and I can smell burn. Yeah, yeah, something burned inside here, but we do not see anything melting on the power adapter. So for those who commented that if the cable is not plugged in fully, that's how connectors are melting. That's not the case here because the cable is not being plugged in to the connector on the board, but rather the cable is being plugged in to the 90 degree cable mod adapter that is connected to the video card connector. And the adapter is intact. I do not see any burn marks and I do not see any melting on this adapter. Right now, I cannot tell if that connector is melted or not, but I can smell. Let me try to remove this power adapter. And <laughs> I cannot even remove the power adapter. I think the connector melted and molded that power adapter onto it. Yeah, I cannot remove the power adapter. I cannot remove the power adapter. It looks like the connector melted and caused the adapter to mold onto it as one piece. So everything is one piece right now. I cannot separate the adapter from the connector. I cannot separate the adapter from the connector. So do you still think that the problem is the cable not being plugged in all the way? Do you still think that's the cause of connectors melting on 40 series graphics cards? I don't think so. That may be part of the equation or that may be a scenario where connectors can melt but that's not always the case. I cannot remove that adapter. I cannot remove the adapter. We're going to have to remove the whole connector along with the adapter. And customer has to buy another adapter unless we can separate the adapter from the connector. But right now, I used all my power and I have powers like Superman and I was not able to remove that adapter. Let's go ahead and remove the connector along with the adapter and my hands smell like burn even though I do not see any signs of anything burning or melting but my hands smell like burn. Let's go ahead and apply low melt solder on back of the connector so we can safely remove this connector. I mean I would like to separate the adapter from the connector so we can see how that connector melted or where it melted but right now I'm not able to do it. Let's remove the connector and then we can try again. We're going to apply low melt solder. What low melt solder does is it mixes with another solder that's on the board and it lowers the melting temperature of solder. That way we can easily remove the connector because it takes a lot of heat to desolder on leaded solder. And the fact that the card is 12, 14 layers, it has a lot of thermal mass. So it takes a lot of heat to desolder the connector. We're going to use the help of hot air to 
to speed up the process. I smell burn. Another one? What? <laughs> Another 4090 with a burnt connector. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let's take a look at this connector. Look at this. Look at this connector. We still have a lot of boxes that we did not open, so maybe we have more 4090s to fix. Now let's try to pull on that connector while solder is still soft. And yes, the connector is out. And maybe one pin is still stuck on the board, but the connector is out. And right now, let's see if we are able to separate the connector from the adapter. And it looks like a mission impossible job. Yeah, it looks like a mission impossible job, but we're going to have to do it. I mean, we got a little bit out, but or maybe not. Unbelievable. It's like trying to separate one piece into two pieces or trying to break one piece in two. I'm able to wiggle it up and down now, but it's still stuck. And it's not stuck because of the lock that you have in the front, because I already pulled on that lock all the way. So there is no lock. And of course, we're going to tell the user not to use this adapter anymore, even if we removed it. The only way I'm able to separate that adapter is by breaking it. I got it right here. And look at the cable mod 90 degree adapter. Wow. Fully usable, right? Let's take a look at the connector. Look at how badly this connector is burned, just like the one that we just got in the mail. Look at this. And the cable mod adapter molded itself onto those pins, to the plastic of the connector. So myth busted, right? It's not only a cable that is not plugged in properly that is causing the connector to melt, but the connector is melting anyway, even with the 90 degree adapter. We're going to clean the holes and solder a new connector. But the question remains, how can the customer prevent this from happening again? And don't tell me let the customer plug in the cable all the way because the customer has a cable mod 90 degree adapter plugged in all the way and the connector still melted. We're not going to re-engineer this card. And what about the card that we got in today with the same issue? What about the card that we got in yesterday with the same issue? The day before with the same issue? Let me cut the braid. Whatever tools we are using on the bench, you can purchase directly off our site. We have all items in stock. And this includes original Amtec flux, soldering station, hot air station, thermal camera, charging stations, voltage injection tool, tweezers. We have over, I think, 15 different types of tweezers for different jobs. Just log in to northridge6.com add whatever you want to cart 
check out, pay, and orders almost always ship out same day. All items are in stock. The only thing that's not in stock as of today are the microscopes. We are currently out of stock, but we are expecting a shipment, I would say, by end of May. You can still pre-order, and we will secure one for you and ship it out as soon as we have the microscopes back in stock. We sell more microscopes than any company in the U.S., and the reason is we have the highest quality microscopes in the market. Just look at the quality. Look at the details. I'm currently using the anti-glare light, and that's why we do not see any reflections. But if we are to use the ring light and not the anti-glare light, you would see something like this. And that's what 90% of creators on YouTube work with. Glare and reflections like that. We are special. Every penny you spend buying our tools, it's money well spent. Sometimes, maybe only a simple tweezer, it takes me three weeks to fully test it before we sell it. We have one stock pen right here. So let's apply some heat. Let's flip the board. And now we're going to insert a new connector. And the connector is in. Just like that. The connector is flush with the board, and now we're going to solder the connector from the bottom. Now, of course, we're going to apply a river of flux. You can never have enough flux if you want good joints. Now look at those joints. Awesome. Just quick clean up. Let me just finalize the repair by adding a little bit of UV mask on the exposed areas that were scratched. Just a tiny bit. Maybe some here. Just so that we can do a better than factory job. Only takes a few seconds. We're going to turn our UV light on. And I'm using the Northridge Fix UV mask and UV light that you can also purchase off our site. Just a few seconds, and this solder mask will be hard like a rock. So 
So I'm using a combination of hot air and UV mask. And I went over this in a previous video. And I mentioned how hot air helps with the curing of UV mask. Just one final cleanup with this very clean swab. And if we flip the board, look at how Salder made its way all the way from back of the board to front of the board. We did an amazing job. Why don't we plug the cord and test it? Plug in the power cable, make sure it's all the way in. Plug in HDMI, and we're gonna turn on the power supply. The fan is spinning on the motherboard. And if we look here, Yes, we are done, off, we're going to unplug the power cable, nice and gentle, unplug the GMI cable, and I'm going to hand this over to Big Boss to reassemble and test. I hope you enjoyed the video, let me know what you think, leave it down in the comments. Do you still think a loose cable is what's causing the connector to melt, or did you change your mind? Let me know, leave it down in the comments and we'll do something else in the next video.